energy because really our brains like change, our minds like change, everything likes change, okay? So um, let's see if there's anything else in there. Oh, um, above the butterfly, you're going to see this, uh, it looks like a wing and there's a beak. And um, this is a like a raptor bird, okay? And so um, I want you to kind of just kind of think, okay, raptor birds, powerful, clear-sighted. Um, so there's this weird thing that when you take a risk that you feel like you can really see. So raptor birds, um, I don't know if you know this about raptor birds, but uh, raptor birds have this weird thing with their eyes. The outer part of their eye detects any motion. The inner part of their eye is a magnifying glass. So they're flying way up there, they notice movement and they immediately can focus that it's a little bitty mouse, right? And so there's a clear sightedness again when you're willing to take a risk, okay? So notice how much energy and, and information is in that card. So just in that one card. Um, the minor arcana don't have as much symbolism and so they'll be a lot faster, but the major arcana can be a little bit slow because there's so much going on in here. So when you're working with cards, I want you to kind of, you get the card and you'll notice that something pops out at you at the card. Like, it, it just jumps out at you. And, and I want you to kind of notice that thing and translate it based on that thing. Because I, I know exactly what all these cards mean and sometimes, you know, something pops out and, and I immediately just go, Oh, it means this today, you know, so I want you to go with what that thing you're seeing is jumping out as. Now notice again at the very bottom below the three flowers, there's two people entwined, okay? So again, life force energy, um, intimacy, um, and so when you are taking a risk, you have to be very intimate with yourself, okay? Because you're taking a risk, you're on the edge, and it's something new. And, you know, so you've got this sexual energy card down at the bottom of the bodies in mind. Okay? That kind of clear for one card? Go ahead. Um, something about the horns and the little hat. Yeah. What that is. So, um, so, you know, you kind of have to think, oh, like, there's this um, right section in the book that I'm going to show you. So, um, so in the book, at the very back of the book, there is a catalog. And the catalog um, for the Fool card starts on page 136. And um, th this is where you can get really the deep, deep meaning of all the symbols completely all the way through. So um, on number 11 under the Fool, it says the two horns of Bacchus. So it says the Fool has two horns that make him appear somewhat devilish. This shows that he is taking a risk and stepping out of the normal way of being. This gives him a somewhat pan type of energy. Pan holds the energy of sexuality and playfulness. And so he represents Bacchus, which is kind of this god of sexuality and play and springtime and, and all of that kind of stuff. So they called it Bacchanals in the springtime and all of that kind of thing, okay? So, and this is where you can dive really deep into all these intricate symbols to the best of your ability. If you really want to go further into them, they're all there. Can you say again about the color? Uh-huh. So, yeah, the color, um, the green, again, is the springtime energy. And there's a lot of colors in here. So, really, we've got more than that, but you want to, like, notice what pops out as you, okay? So we've got green, which is heart chakra. You've actually got blue, which is throat chakra. Um, you've got orange, which is second chakra, which is about joy and life force energy. You've got the gold, which is the third chakra, which is about power center and the expression of emotionality. So there's a lot going on in this card, actually. And so it's affecting all of those chakras. Okay? Any other questions on that particular one? Okay. So then what you're going to notice again is you've got three Magus cards. So um, the first Magus card I call the Entrepreneur card. So this particular first one is called the Entrepreneur card, this particular one. Okay. So and I'll refer to that one as the Entrepreneur card. I can't see it. Okay, there you go. So this one right here is okay. the Entrepreneur card. And then that one is the Trickster, and okay. this one is the Bear Dreamer. Okay, so just so you know. So, and then next, this next one is the Bear Dreamer. And it's the Bear Dreamer because it looks like a bear with a man inside it. 
okay? And then the last one is this, um, this trickster card, which is kind of the King Midas card. So what's the story of King Midas? Everything you touch turned to gold. Right. So was that a good thing? No. No. Right. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, it's kind of, again, be careful what you ask for. You might just get it kind of thing. So um, out of the, the three cards, the trickster card is going to represent, uh, you know, people that are deceptive, um, people that are tricky, um, people that are lying, um, people who have their own agendas. Um, and so you can imagine if I'm doing a reading and some, like, let's say somebody asks a question like, oh, I've got these people that want to do a business partnership with me and um, tell me about them. And that card comes up, what am I going to think? Don't do it. Don't do it. Like there's something not right. There's some sort of deception going on. There's an untruth in the space. You don't really know these people. You don't really know what their agenda is completely. Now, this trickster card, again, is going to show up when you're dealing with people who are drug dealers, um, drug addicts, um, people who are doing uh, things that are dark side, you know, or lying or deceiving or robbing or, or anything like that, okay? So you want to just be aware that this sneaky kind of card is like there's something happening below the surface under the grass. Now, you'll oftentimes, the other time you'll get this is, um, let's say you've got a person who maybe is a psychopathic liar. Okay, now this is really a tricky thing because um, I as a psychic uh, have had a tendency in the past to look at people that were um, lying and what happens is when a person lies their aura changes color. Okay, and that's how you know they're lying. Okay, but a psychopathic liar their aura doesn't change color because they believe their lie. And so you can get fooled by these people. So when this card comes up, you know, in any way I start kind of going, Okay, you know, um, hmm, maybe I don't know this person, or maybe there's a deception going on that I can't see. And but boy, they seem really congruent, but maybe they're not actually. Do you see what I'm saying? And so this card is a great card to kind of check to see what's really going on because you may not know what's really going on. Okay. Um, then if you look at the the Magus Bear Dreamer, so what is the bear a symbol of? In, yes. Um, spirit, dream time, dream magic. And notice that this card looks kind of dreamy. So it kind of looks starry and it's a darker blue and it looks more like dream time. So um, this card is about the communication inwardly with yourself. This, the communication you need to do with yourself through meditation. Um, skills you need to learn by going inward. Okay. Whereas the trickster card is you need skills to learn to navigate deceptive people or you need to pay attention to where you could be being deceived. You might need contracts. You might need skills to know how to navigate these kind of people that are a little sneaky or manipulative or tricky. And again, you know, tricky within yourself too. Like are you lying to yourself in some way? Am I deceiving myself in some way? Okay. And then the entrepreneur card, um, this one is about skills at work. Like, you know, really like, I need to learn computer skills. I need to learn Dreamweaver. I need to learn HTML code. I need to learn a new phone system. I need to learn how to navigate my new um, digital recorder, right? <laughs> so um, this is about skills, but it also is communication skills. Like, I need to learn skills of communicating with people. Um, maybe I need to go back to school. Maybe I need to get a degree. Maybe I need to learn NLP skills or communication skills on how to say something better. Maybe I need to look at my communication skills that they're not quite up to snuff and why do I keep getting people angry at me when I don't think I'm, I'm saying anything bad. So this is about skills that you need in daily life, in work, in dealing with people. The Bear Dreamer is the skills that you need with yourself to navigate your inward world. You need meditation skills. You need um, you know, dream magic skills. You need to learn to navigate complex symbolism, archetypal information, um, metaphorical stories. Um, so this is the clue that you need to go inward to learn something. And then um, the trickster again is that you need to be aware of where you're being deceived. So. Um, everybody knows the story of the Wizard of Oz, right? Well, when I was doing these cards for years, I translated 
the major arcana based on the metaphors of the Wizard of Oz because each of the major arcana is a particular element in the Wizard of Oz, but also the story Forrest Gump. Now, I can't use those symbols because they're copywritten. So, you know, there's all these things that happen that, but I want you to kind of notice that movies always have good movies, really successful movies, have all the major arcana archetypes in the movie. And it's kind of cool to start looking at the famous movies and say, okay, where's the tower? Where's the devil card? Where's this? Where's that? And it's kind of fun. So um, the fool card, obviously, in The Wizard of Oz would be what? What happens at the beginning of the movie? She runs away, right? Mm -hmm. She runs away. She's being stupid, right? She's being a fool. She's running away, and she's like, I'm going to save Toto, and I'm going to, you know, I mean, so she's totally spontaneous doing this thing, and notice again, in a weird way, she's totally protected, right? Because who does she come across? Wizard. A well, the wizard. Guy. A wizard. But what's cool is that in the wizard, in the little, in his little um, wagon, the wizard in the wagon, what is that particular wizard? He's a wizard of what? Communication. He knows that she's run away. He knows that she needs to go home. He knows that he needs to get her to go back home. So he uses his skills of communication to positively manipulate her to go home. How? The crystal ball. Right. And he gets her to be worried about who? Auntie M. Auntie M. Something's going to happen to Auntie M. So this is about the skill of communication that sometimes you have to use to manipulate people to their own good to do what's best for them. Okay? And so I call them positive thought viruses. Okay? So, but did you notice in The Wizard of Oz, this character shows up other places, doesn't he? He shows up where? He shows up as the, the gatekeeper to Oz. He shows up as the gatekeeper to the land of Oz. He shows up as Oz, right? So he's actually all of those. So he's the trickster. He's lying. He's manipulating. He's deceiving her. I am Oz, right? You know, and, and, and ignore that man behind the, the, the curtain, right? Kind of like that. And it's like, I'm going to make you go do this crazy thing, right? And he's deceiving her, okay? He actually is deceiving her in a negative way because, you know, he didn't know, he didn't want to be revealed, okay? And yet at the same time, he's the guide um, in, in the journey. Like, he shows her how to get to places because he's also the carriage master with the horses that change color. So he's guiding her to get dressed up and cleaned up and everything like this. And so he is guiding her inwardly and spiritually at the same time. So what's amazing in The Wizard of Oz is that character is all three of these cards. Okay? Which is why um, Lady Frida Harris could make them all one, too. Okay? So you can actually take all of these archetypes and make them one, but then you have to kind of feel into whether this card, you know, is deception or if it's one of the, if it's the dream, bear dreamer. And so you can do this and, but so like when I'm reading cards, I look at it and I just kind of go, if I'm only using this one card, I just go, which way is that one going? And I'll look at it based on the cards that are around it. So if there are heavier cards around it, I'm going to translate it the heavier way. If there's lighter cards around it, I'm going to translate it this way. If there's kind of like emotional, mysterious cards around it, I'm going to translate it as the Bear Dreamer. Okay? So in Tarot, what's around what and what's touching what um, makes a difference. It actually tells you something.